there are many ways to approach this. So I'm going to ask you first, is there a particular method you want me to show you? Graph way, because cases was all for. Yeah, okay. It can be done by cases, but it is hard. And it's also, I find it's a bit like, um, doing things by cases is a sometimes a little bit like following instructions on a, on a recipe, you, you can follow them, but you don't necessarily know why you're doing what you're doing. You're just sort of going through the motions and then crossing your fingers that at the, out, out the end, a, a, a baked cake will come out, okay? Uh, you're like, why is it 180 degrees? I don't know. What's baking powder do? I don't know. But it does something. <laughs> Graphing, I find, gives you a much bigger, or well, literally gives you a bigger picture. So let, let's have a go at this, okay? So I'm going to say first graph. So let's just break that part of the question down first. Okay. Um, I need to consider this and this, and then I'm going to combine them. Okay. So draw up a nice big set of axes. And what I'm going to do is, if the question were part A, graph, I would have to pay quite a lot of attention to the, the, the specifics of the graph itself, because the question is graph. However, if the question is just solve this, and I'm using the graph as a tool, the graph doesn't have to be beautiful or anything. You don't even have to use a ruler necessarily. It just has to be good enough so that you can use it as a guide to solve the question. So, um, bad choice of color. One piece at a time. I'm going to think about this and then this. Okay. So, x minus 2. Forget about the absolute value for a second. What does y equals x minus 2? What does it look like? It's like it intercepts it. Minus two, yeah, and then it just keeps going up. Yeah, it's just got a gradient of one, right? So I have that vision in my mind. I have it. Is there a ruler here? No, here we go. Oh, hidden up there. Yeah, see? Yeah, okay. So it's where a teacher would hide it. Um, I, you'll notice I haven't drawn the bottom of the axis. Do you know why? Because it's absolute values. It's absolute values. Not only is it absolute values, I'm adding absolute values. If you add two things that are positive, you'll get something else that's positive. So that's why I've ignored the bottom. However, it would do something like this, wouldn't it? Okay, if that was like negative two, and then off you go, and you're graded yeah. one. Okay, so I'm gonna be a bit cheap, and I'm going to draw part of it right now, like this. Uh, move it over a little bit, actually. That is the only part that I've drawn. Because of the positive part, the rest of it is irrelevant. Okay. What does happen to the rest of it? it just skips Bounces up. Yeah, very good. Something like that. Okay. So this, and this is important, I've got, I've got two branches, right? So I'm going to label the branches as they are. This part here is y equals x minus 2. What's the other part? y equals x minus x plus two. No, negative 2 minus x. x. Either way is fine. Uh, I'm just going to write 2 minus x because I'm lazy and that's faster. Okay? But it's, it's valid to say negative x plus 2. Cool. Now I've got the other part. Absolute value of 2x plus 1. What can you tell me about it? Gradient of 2 is that 1. Good. So now that I have actual values on my graph, what is this value again? This one here. Uh, uh, my two. It was negative 2 and it reflected up to 2. Okay, so if that's 2, then just for my own sake, I'm going to put 1 in a reasonable spot. Okay? So there's 1. So it crosses the axis there, and you told me it was steep. So it's going to do something like this. You okay with that? Uh, and then of course there's a reflected bit, so let's see how we go. Oh, that's too steep. I'm going to try that again. Oh, steepness. Like I said, I'm being a bit of a sticker, but you only need it good enough. That's I think it's good enough. You only need it good enough to, to get a guide. Okay. okay. Now, again, this part has two branches. So you've got the 2x plus 1 branch, and then what's the other branch? Uh, one, one, one minus two x. I'd be lazy as well. One minus two x. Oh wait, no, they're both negatives. Aren't they're they? both negatives. Yeah. The reason why this switched oh, around wow. is because one was negative, one was uh, yeah, things you spot, right? So this is in fact minus two x minus one. Shouldn't you be with that. Yeah. All right, so now we want to think about uh, what this thing is going to look like. Now I already know a lot of places where the sum of these two graphs is going to go through. For instance, coincidentally, like I just wrote these numbers down, coincidentally, the y-intercept for both graphs together is going to be 1 plus 2, which is? That point's really important to me, 
because it's on the boundary. Okay? You can see then, all right, there's going to be to, um, to the left of this spot over here. By the way, what is that spot? Do you know what it is? To the left. To the left of the origin, there's zero. This is negative. Oh. It's going to be negative a half because remember it's got a gradient of two. So if you can imagine this little triangle in here with a rise over run, that's half and that's one. So one divided by a half is two. That's your gradient. Um, so to the left of this, you're going to add these two guys together, right? I'm going to go up on my graph to here, roughly. Okay. Now. Having a look at this, sorry, I'm just thinking to myself, yes, yes, that's what I expected. You're going to have a line that's really, really steep. Wait, so can you like that? Step? So, wait, oh, wait, so the negative half yep. there. Yep. How did so I get it? Where did yeah, that come from? It's just because of the. So, I can think of it in terms of gradient, that's one way to think about it. Mm -hmm. Another way to think about it is it is the junction where this branch turns into this branch. Yeah. Agree? And then and the, the, turn, the, the junction is, is this thing positive or is it negative, right? It changes exactly when it's zero. Mm -hmm. So I can do this, which gives me this. Okay. So and that's how, what gives me And how do you move it up and then, like, the yep. dot and then Yeah, 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 okay. okay. So at this point here, the green graph is zero. Mm -hmm. And then I'm adding zero to something else. I don't know what oh. the something else is, but zero plus something will be yeah, something, something yeah. right? Um, something just below th between two and three. So okay. The absolute value graphs, it could be off the x-axis, right? Off the uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So then, how would you do that? I. Uh, do you want me to do that as a separate question? Yes. Yeah, I can do that. That's fine. Um, for now, though, I can sort of address what you, the skill you need for that question, even within this question. I'll show you what I mean. What have I got here? Okay, this line is really, really steep because you've got this decreasing line, I'm reading left to right, this decreasing line and this decreasing line. So they're both decreasing, it's really, really decreasing. I can find out, find out how much it's decreasing by looking at these two formulas and adding them together, the equations, right? It's going to be, what's the, what's the coefficient of x? It'll be negative three, right? Negative two here and negative one here. What about the constant? Two, one. negative one, that's plus one, is it? Okay. So that's the branch, that's the equation of that really tall branch. Okay. All right, that was that looking to the left of there. Then on the right, all the way up until here, in this region here, this orange line is doing the same thing and this green line is doing the same thing. So I want to know what's happening in between. What's this value? Two, very good. So between negative a half and two, You've got this line that's going down. And then what it's You've got down. zero plus this. Zero plus this, whatever this is. So, zero plus this is just, yeah, okay. And in between, you've got a point here, we already know the y-intercept, another point. These are all straight lines. You add straight lines, you get more straight lines. So this is the thing that joins all of them. But you don't get anything in between the range, the, like the boundaries like it's always a straight line. Yeah, that's right. Um, like the sum of linear functions is another linear function, is the way we would say it. Okay. All right. Now, again, we can work out the equation of this middle part. How are we going to do it? You have to add the decreasing branch with the yep. increasing branch. Very good. So this orange decreasing branch is 2 minus x. But this green increasing branch is 2x plus 1. So y is going to be equal to, just collect the like terms for x. Plus three. Yeah. Perfect. And you can know it's x plus 3 because look, it goes through 3. Yeah? We already worked that out before. And um, the gradient of, of negative 1, the gradient of 2, that leaves you with a gradient of 1 when you add it. Okay. Now, watch this. See how I've been carefully constructing each bit, working on what the equation is? I'm going to draw this bit, and then I don't give a rip what the equation is. Mm. This is one of the great things about not doing it through cases because once you draw the picture, you know this part doesn't matter. Why? Because it's already above the three. I'm already yeah. above three, right? I already went above three here. So I don't care. I mean, I can't work out this equation, but I never need to touch it. Never ever, okay? All the interesting stuff is happening in here, okay? So that's enough of a, a graph to do this. 
I need to work out the parts that are above three. There's only actually a small component that's below three, right? <laughs> this part here, that's the dud, right? So from here upwards is good. And then from here upwards is also good, right? Now, conveniently, this is landed on the winder set, right? So that's where x equals zero. So this is just going to be x is greater than or equal to zero. That will take me, that will give me all those values, okay? Uh, this one is a bit trickier. How do I work that out? You have to substitute in. I'm going to have to substitute in. I know what the y value is along here. It's, um, it's three, right? And I know what the equation of this line is. It's minus 3x plus 1. So I'm going to say minus 3x plus 1. Well, when is that equal to 3? And the answer is uh, 2 <laughs> x equals negative 2 thirds. Does that look like negative 2 thirds? Yeah. Yeah, look, remember that one? That's negative a half. It's just to the left. Perfect. Okay. So this is x is less than or equal to negative, negative 2 over 3. I've done all the legwork. So now I can say, uh, this is true when x is less than negative 2 over 3 or x is greater than or equal to 0. Why is it or and not and? Because it doesn't join. Because you can't simultaneously be greater than 0 and less. Yeah, there's no number. There isn't any number <laughs> that can do both of these at the same time. You can be one or you can be the other, which is great, yeah, is but math, not both. Math, uh, math. <laughs> I didn't write anything in, what, in the first exam. And I lost a mark because I didn't have and or all, and I meant to like join them. Yeah, well sometimes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see, you see, uh, this is one of the superpowers of mathematics, which is, is a two-edged sword. In mathematics, there's no wasted words, there's no wasted symbols, a single character changes everything. So therefore a word really matters. So economy um, makes things faster and more efficient and more dangerous when you leave out little things. So, um, if you were to do this by cases, okay, um, still doable. I mean, that wasn't, that wasn't quick either, but cases is longer. Um, you end up doing work that ends up being redundant because you can't tell. You've got no picture in front of you. And then you get to the end and you're like, oh, why did I do that for? Okay. Um, so, this is the way that I think is best and graphing is always useful. So. That's three marks. 